Hey, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. My name is Ethan Van Skyver. I'm but a humble ink and superhero merchant for DC Comics, bringing you the best quality superhero entertainment I can every month. Here's one right here. It's Batman the Dawnbreaker, part of The Dark Knights, a uh, little mini-series. Uh, it's part of the gigantic metal event. It is a tie-in. And it is written by the underrated genius, Sam Humphreys. Um, drawn by the overrated hack, me, Ethan Van Skyver. And uh, colored by one of the best colorists in the uh, industry today, Jason Wright. Fantastic. Look at this cover, Jason Fabic. This cover and the nice shiny metallic uh, coating uh, screams, buy me, buy me, I think. Uh, DC has really pulled out this, all the stops for this event, and I really feel like... Um, uh, this book kind of recalls the 90s, um, the 90s, back when some people were really enthusiastic about uh, comics, um, and uh, a lot of people are uh, hoping that the industry returns more to the way things were in the 1990s. Those people, I think, people who feel that way, will really enjoy this book if they are consistent in the things that they uh, say they believe. Um, so basically what this book is, uh, is it's an alternate universe, uh, multiver uh, it's the multiverse, okay? A dark multiverse. It's actually a negative multiverse, uh, wherein Bruce Wayne, um, in each different world, this is Earth negative 32, okay? Bruce Wayne uh, makes tragic choices, uh, makes, and, and um, we end up with the worst possible consequences. Um, because of those choices he makes. I mean, cosmically crazy, bad consequences. Because uh, this Bruce Wayne is not the Bruce Wayne that we know. He's a different Bruce Wayne. Um, so, uh, this was interesting. Uh, I was given a, a plot outline for this. And told to kind of condense and add things to it. Um, it was kind of done in Marvel style. Uh, I drew it and then... Um, uh, dialogue was was kind of in the in the plot outline here and there, but uh, Sam Humphreys went back and he scripted everything over uh, the pages that I drew. For example, in the original outline uh, that I was given, this would have been a full page spread that opened up the book. So an entire book would an entire page in the opening would have been him floating around in darkness and broken buildings and things like that. Uh, wondering where he went wrong, feeling sorry for himself, basically just being a little jerk. Um, and I said, you know what, I'm going to do this as kind of, um, instead, I'm going to have that whole theme running in the borders uh, of each of the next few pages that are the flashback of his origin. We get a nice close-up, we see darkness and selfishness in his face, regret maybe? I don't think regret, I'm not sure, it's, it's something more like self-pity um, and anger uh, as uh, he remembers Joe Chill and this is the face of the man who uh, viciously murdered his parents in an alleyway. Uh, later on I echo this sequence when uh, this or the scene when Hal Jordan shows up uh, for the first time and actually when I drew this I was hoping that uh, the dialogue that he speaks here would be similar to, if not the same, as the dialogue that Hal Jordan speaks there, which sets him off, which would set him off. Here's another adult figure uh, telling him what to do in a way that he thinks is unfair. Uh, he is uh, um, a normal kid at this point, perhaps, uh, overwhelmed by grief. Here he has become a sociopath, a narcissist who has lost any empathy uh, all empathy, um, and this image, a weapon being pointed at you by uh, an adult who is ordering you to do something uh, humiliating, uh, would cause him to feel the same things that he's feeling in this moment. Here he's powerless, uh, utterly powerless over the bodies of his parents, and he takes a knee. Uh, and in this moment, this is where things change. Uh, Joe Child spares his life and runs down the alleyway. He's got what he wants. He just wants money. Uh, and instead of waiting for the police to come and uh, take him uh, home so he can get time to heal and mourn and, uh, you know, 
basically make plans for his future, he decides in that moment, I am not afraid, and I'm going to chase down this man who murdered my parents, and I'm going to get justice. And at that point, a Green Lantern ring comes and finds him. Now, this is controversial. Um, I don't know that the Green Lantern ring is programmed to anticipate um, revenge or um, bad motives, after all, or, or just weak people, people who are going to turn to evil. After all, this sat on Sinestro's finger for many, many, many decades. Um, so, uh, certainly, uh, if it was capable of anticipating um, uh, who this Bruce Wayne character is and where he was going to go, uh, you know, it, it might not have sat on his finger. But again, Sinestro was a Green Lantern at one point, and this kid, he's just displaying the proper uh, qualifications for the ring, which is no fear, willpower, willful, super willful. Um, it has chosen children before. Uh, it currently sits on the finger of uh, a young alien from Tomar Ray species, a young girl. So it does choose children. Age, age ain't nothing but a number. Uh, Joe Chill just sitting there counting his loot. And here comes a super-powered uh, young kind of a 12-year-old Hal, uh, Hal Jordan, Bruce Wayne. I'm not sure how old he is. I never really got an age. I assumed he was uh, a young, 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 uh, maybe he's a tween. He, I think he's 11 or 12. Comes down and uh, utterly smites, uh, well, he, he wants to smite Joe Chill. And can this happen? I mean, is this the way it works? Uh, can Can you override a ring with too much willpower? I don't think the the ring can uh, distinguish the difference between childish willfulness, uh, which is being displayed here. You can see a crack is already forming in the ring, and then just bold, you know, willpower, the willpower of a man who's trying to get something accomplished, something positive. Um, in any case, this is the negative universe, negative world of the multiverse, and in this universe where the Green Lantern Corps is different, um, the ring cracks and obeys him. And yeah, this is a manifestation of how he feels. This boy has had no time to heal and to mourn. Um, boom. This is fun for me. I like this. Yeah, if you're going to overkill, overkill. Melt this guy's face right off. It's fun to look at. Or maybe I'm just sick. I don't know. Stuff like that's fun to draw. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you know, that's what's left. That's what you get. Um... You know, poor Bruce. I like this image a lot. They're holding hands. And this was creepy as hell. He tries to bring them back. He does. He doesn't understand what the ring does. Um, he just knows that it is a uh, Green Lantern Corps ring. It says, Welcome to the Green Lantern Corps. Oh. And uh, one assumes between here and here, the ring gave him a few tips. Uh, he's not trained in the ring. He's, he's not a disciplined warrior. He's not uh, really an agent for the Corps yet. Uh, for some reason, um, for some reason, the, the Green Lantern Corps lets him do this. Um, we can only assume it's because this is a different world and the Guardians are different. <clears throat> and here he is again, the framing device floating in space. Uh, 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 for a little while, they called him a hero. And so, you know, he's he's sitting here right now. He's recalling energy. He's pulling in energy, dark energy. Um, from the universe because he's about to build his own power battery. And the power battery is going to act as a cocoon uh, with which to change him into uh, Dawnbreaker. And Gordon's trying to stop him. He's trying to talk reason into him. But this boy, he is, uh, he's become a serial killer now. He, he uh, has killed before. One of his first acts as a Green Lantern was to brutally murder someone. And he's going to continue to kill. Um, right here, this is a tribute piece to um, both uh, Showcase 22. You see the missile, and he's, you know, shooting the yellow missile. It's also a, a more subtle tribute to Detective 27, um, where in Batman is swinging in and holding a, a villain by the neck, and his legs are kind of doing this. Uh, I decided instead of drawing a normal human being that was boring, I would actually draw a younger scarecrow. Um, being manhandled here by young Bruce. Um, and that yellow missile is straight from Showcase. 
uh, in on that showcase cover, he seems to be blasting it, and it's ineffective because the missile's yellow. Well, that doesn't make any sense in today's continuity, so he's making a um, hand to sort of grab the missile. He is kind of a hero, but he's cruel at this point. And um, Gordon wants to know what happened to Penguin. He's going to ask him, where's Penguin? Yeah, okay, well, I killed him, okay? There you go. And this is the thing, in the original... Uh, plot I was given, um, I was asked to, uh, um, I don't know, he was gonna, I think Sam said, why don't you have him chop his head off and hold his bloody head, and I thought that was okay, but it's not really something that a Green Lantern would do, and it, it's not, it's not necessarily creative, plus I want to do a decapitation for another character in this book, uh, so I thought about the Injustice video games, and they're like crazy, like f not finishing moves, but those special moves they do where they just like knock you through the planet and out the other side. And this just like seemed like a move from that video game where you just grab your character. You're a Green Lantern. You can do this. Lift him off into space at hyper speed. Just leave him there in the path of meteors Poof, that just ex just slaughter him in one million pieces. I had this image in my mind. I couldn't wait to draw this. Couldn't wait. Um, let's skip a few. He kills Gordon, uh, Green Lantern Corps here, um, and he, uh, you know, it's like this, this is interesting, a little, you know, we start out, and look, they're big, they're kind of overwhelming, I don't know, I should have drawn him a little bit smaller there, I guess, um, but he makes them, he reduces them in size with the, with the horrible monstrosities he creates to consume them. And uh, you can see him down here. He's small too. He's even smaller. But he's this is this is what's inside of his heart right now. This is what his soul looks like. That's his willpower. It's uh, ugly. It's worse than ugly. It's um, super psychopathic. Uh, he kills the Green Lantern Corps. Um, let's skip a couple there. He steps into the lantern that he's created, the power battery uh, that he has created with his ring. And uh, not too hard, it's just a construct. And he comes out as the Dawnbreaker. It's actually a, kind of like a little cocoon. And here's the butterfly that is uh, Batman. <clears throat> Floating around in space. The man who laughs here. I love this. Uh, I drew this and, uh, you know, I swear to God, I didn't realize what I was doing. Uh, he's floating around in space. Uh, Dawnbreaker, I mean, the, man, the Batman who laughs shows up on with Ono Mass to draw a piece of floating rubble or rubbish. And this is actually supposed to be kind of a piece of a school bus that's been turned inside out. You can see the tire here, and these are the window panes. It's colored uh, gray. I just thought, I don't really care. Um, it looks better like this. Uh, I, when I finished this, Andrea said, Oh, I get it. He's the mother bird, and these are the baby robins in the nest. And she's like, that was intentional, right? And I'm like, no, uh, that wasn't intentional at all, but I wish it was. And had I thought of that great idea, I would have had this guy here like like looking up with his mouth open and him dropping like human entrails into his mouth. God, that would have been great. I wish I'd thought of it. Oh, I'm gonna regret that for the rest of my career. How Jordan shows up, as we said, he takes care of how. Uh, Dr. Fate saves him. Uh, and then this is the final two-page spread. I don't know. I mean, look, um, he is basically here to end. Now he's in our reality. He's here to end Coast City. That's what he's here to do. He's here to make it chaotic. He's here to kill everyone. He's here to uh, bring, make it dark, just like how he feels in his heart. It's so heavy metal. It's just so heavy metal. Um... Yeah, spent a lot of time drawing these people, uh, doing stuff, <laughs> getting pulled into the air. If I'd had more time, I would have done it so that you could see them all the way up here. Little people like being carried around by like winged monkeys, but I really didn't have the time. I did only have four weeks to draw this, and that was just enough time to do what I did, pencils and inks. Um, and it's okay, you know, I think it's, I think it came out all right. Um, yeah. Now, uh, Dawnbreaker was not created or designed by me. I'm not sure who, who did it. I, I think it was Jim Lee and Greg Capullo. I think. Um, I don't know. This whole event was kind of like um, 
you know, hey, you know, you're going to do this, and here's the stuff. And I, I read the uh, the Bible that was attached to it, and uh, understood what they were doing. Didn't always didn't always understand um, the character. I tried my best, and that's the thing about um, working on something like this. You're starting from scratch. You're creating something that uh, hasn't really doesn't have a history behind it to go back and catch up on. You're just kind of it's your job to make it something. It's somebody else's idea. It's your job to make it into something. And they're going to take it from there. So that was a, a very interesting creative proposition. Last page is black. Yes, I was paid just to turn in a black page. I love when that happens. Um, and again, yeah, Sam Humphreys. He uh, wrote a plot outline and he scripted it. I think he did a pretty good job. Uh, it's a fun book. I mean, I, I read mixed reviews of it, but the people who liked it really liked it. I mean, some of these reviews were um, 10 out of 10, which is rare. Um, and, uh, you know, good editors, good people here. Very good people. Um, now, of course, this book isn't for everybody. I mean, if you are uh, a very cynical critic... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to. I was gonna. I was gonna do some clapback, but I'm not gonna do that. I I love you guys too much, all of you, and uh, <laughs> but this was fun. It was a lot of fun to do, and I have to say, it just looks like um, the kind of product on the shelf uh, that we need to see more of. Um, shiny, exciting, um, special. It looks special. It feels special. The whole line looks and feels special. And um, it is the prettiest looking book that I, I've ever been a part of. So, um, you know, I want to thank everyone who bought it and everyone who's, who's supporting this event uh, and everyone who had nice things to say uh, in reviewing this book. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, we work hard and it feels good to, uh, you know, to get good reviews. It really does. It's great. So thank you very much. This is uh, Ethan Van Skyver, Comic Artist Pro Secrets, and this is the most current possible uh, commentary track, uh, secret commentary track that uh, I've got on my channel. I wouldn't normally do this. I would normally let some time go by, but I thought this would be fun anyway. Um, this should still be in, in stores right now. Go out and grab it and hit the subscribe button and um, go ahead and rock that bell for me. Uh, you'll get updates as to new videos uploading, uh, when I upload them, I mean, and uh, we'll hang out, okay? All right, so thanks for watching. I'll see you soon again. Bye-bye.